to block or not to block? That is the question. And I say that in the most Shakespearean voice that I can master from within me because the drama is needed for this question. I feel like blocking people is such a phenomenon. There are people who disagree with the idea of doing it, who will say that it's immature, it shows an an inability to be able to communicate and that it's a dead end where there could have been a conversation. Whereas other people might argue that blocking is a good thing. It cuts people off from the ability to trigger you any further it allows you to set a boundary without having to say anything and it creates a full stop at something that had no business continuing in the first place and so in the world of dating men or even just sharing a planet with them whether you're romantically involved with them or not blocking is something that at some point will come up in your life as an option if you haven't already blocked someone I wonder if there's a way to count how many men you've blocked in your entire life like I need a metric some sort of like app that will just collate all the contacts whether it's on social media or messaging platforms where you've interacted with men that you've blocked like I want to know because I think for me the number would probably (laughs) be like I want to say to be generous and to land on the safe side I want to say like 250 But that's probably smaller than what it is in my personal life. Because that number includes men I've never met. You know, men who might have just said weird things to me on social media. Men who might have had a chance of me and I decided to end it there. Like all of that is combined in that figure. But then when I think about the men that I actually know who I've blocked after having enough of an interaction with them to feel impacted, I want to say maybe it's like... 40 or 30 I don't think that's that bad (laughs) I wonder what it is for you but I'm I'm quite curious about why blocking people is such a big thing especially when it comes to blocking men because sometimes and this might sound surprising but sometimes I'm not actually keen on blocking men even if they've done something to upset me because Hear me out. Once in a while, it feels like if you block someone, that in itself is a response and it kind of gives them material to work with when it comes to them getting supply from you. And when I say supply, what I mean by that word is that they get some sort of like rush or energetic stimulation from knowing that you have been impacted by their behavior (laughs) and it's so annoying but having said all that there are certain men I've had to block here and I'm actually at a point where I don't care if you think I'm bitter I would actually rather you think I'm bitter than think I'm accessible because for certain guys them knowing that they can still reach you after they have repeatedly done something to disrespect you or they have given you an impression that allows you to believe they don't care about you and then they're still able to access you I feel like it's kind of telling of what you're prepared to accept and in my experience and in my opinion guys know that if you're likely to accept a particular behavior that should never fly in the first place, they will do it again because they can and they know that you're going to stay. So I would rather you think I'm bitter when you see that I've blocked you out of nowhere. I'd rather that because you can think I'm bitter, but you still can't reach me though. And also I think a lot of women are scared of coming across as bitter Because it's that whole idea of being the nice girl and not being angry. But like there are reasons to be angry. There's things to be angry about. And I think because I'm a Sagittarius, which is a fire sign. And, you know, fire signs got very, very sharp tongues. Yeah. (laughs) It's actually better that I block you than to tell you what's on my mind. Because if I say 
what it is that I've already drafted in my notes app to you. <laughs> Your life will change forever. You won't even recognize yourself in the mirror. That's how traumatized you'll be. <laughs> so it's better that I block you. I remember a scenario not long ago. I want to say this was like months ago where there was this guy and do you know what? Yeah, I, I've, I've, I, I had known him for a few years, but I didn't meet him until like a few months ago for the first time. To explain that further, we, you know, in the social media age where we're all like, you know, one shared story away from meeting someone new, we both have a lot of mutual friends and we're both in the creative industry. And so it made sense to connect with this person through a mutual follow. We both followed each other. And what I was drawn to in this guy was that he stood for something. It's the Sagittarius sun Libra rising in me and if you're not an astrology fan you're probably rolling your eyes at me using my astrological placements to support my behavior but okay it makes sense anyway <laughs> Sagittarius sun Libra rising in me I am drawn to people who stand for something okay because Sagittarius as a sign governs philosophy and higher learning and really really deep thinking and Libra as a sign is all about justice and conversation and political stances. So that combination makes me someone that is quite enticed by people who have a philosophical approach to life, but also inject those philosophies into their art whilst presenting it through a package of like resistance in some way. I'm quite drawn to that. I find it spicy and, and fascinating. So this guy embodied those, those you know, traits features sentiments whatever you want to call it so I was like okay this is this is cool but because he he lived lived at the time in another country we never met but it wasn't like we were pen pals like writing each other digital letters every day no it was that occasionally there would be the odd interaction here and there where he might like I don't know, reply to something on my story or like then from him replying to my story, then a conversation might start for like maybe three back and forths and then silence again for another two weeks. Like it was very that, just very like platonic, but there was some sort of, you know, I felt like that he was attracted to me <laughs> as he should be because I'm what? I'm attractive. <laughs> and this is what I want more people to to think. Like if a guy is talking to you, because he's attracted to you it's because you're an attractive person like you need to believe that you're attractive because attractive people attract people so anyway we would talk occasionally and then a few months ago we ended up meeting at this like social event or something and I ended up actually being quite mean to him on purpose because he kept on giving me hot and cold energy and I'd actually already like block and unblocked him at some point in our friendship prior to us even meeting because he did something to annoy me. Like he was just acting weird. Do you know what he was doing that was weird, yeah? And this is a thing that guys do that would definitely like disqualify them in my head. He would like send me messages. Instagram was our main communication platform. He would send me messages on Instagram. And so I would reply. And then... It's like once I reply within within like a minute to two minutes, he would open the message. So Instagram lets you know when someone has seen your message and it will indicate that with a tiny little scene at the bottom of the last message that you sent. So I'll be like, okay, he's seen my message. And then he would deliberately like take two hours. It's like it's like he would sit on his hands and just like wait for a particular amount of time to pass before he would reply to me even though he's already seen the message and the message that I sent him wasn't anything that required like deep enough thought for you to disappear for two hours each time. Like it felt so calculated and it made me feel weird because I was like something, something awkward is going on here and I don't like that this guy is overthinking his interactions with me because that already tells me that there's a power tussle going on here because a power tussle doesn't necessarily have to be a tug of war or like you're both trying to compete with each other I feel like sometimes a power tussle happens even when you aren't aware of it. And a lot of guys 
unfortunately approach women with the intention to try and extract power from them because most men unfortunately derive their masculinity from the ability to overpower a woman so he met his match with me because that wasn't going to happen so as I noticed that he was deliberately taking long to reply to a message that he excitedly opened I would just kind of stop talking to him you know just letting myself drift away because I don't know what there is to discuss like you're acting weird and then yeah, like clockwork he would notice that I'm not talking to him anymore and he would start replying flirty things to my stories like you know just like the choice of emojis is very flirty you know I think you could tell if something is is flirty if let's say the guy who's flirting with you has a wife would his wife or his girlfriend be happy to see those emojis like if I was your girlfriend sir and I looked over your shoulder as you were opening your DM conversation with me and you're scrolling through our DM and I'm just seeing hella heart eye emojis, fire emojis, heart eye emoji again, another fire emoji. I'd be like, is there something going on here? In my head, of course, because <laughs> I don't want you to know I saw that. But, you know, it was very that, very like light kind of playground flirting. And again, I think because I'm a very mature woman, the playground flirting only lasts so long before I just get bored of that. So he was doing all that. I stopped talking to him in response to that and just kind of left that there. And then when we finally met in person a few months ago, after I kind of play fought him verbally, <laughs> we still ended up like actually like reigniting the friendship, I'd call it. We went for a walk. We hung out, you know. We, I think had a really cool dynamic where it felt like okay this guy uh he's flirting with me and I think he wants to be more than friends even though I don't see him in that way because <laughs> the main context that I've missed here and he better not be listening to this podcast because I'm going to find a way to block him on YouTube I don't know how to do that but there has to be a way <laughs> but <laughs> the main context here is that the whole time that I have known him he's been married but as at the time when I actually met him in person a few months back based on my speculative speculative is that the word based on my speculative observations from looking at his socials and looking at his wife I'm gonna put ex-wife in brackets question mark brackets looking at his ex-wife socials none of them have pictures of each other on there anymore so I was like okay maybe maybe something has changed anyway I feel uncomfortable about um interacting in a flirty manner with men who have just like parted ways with their wife because you've usually if a guy has I want to say yeah if you meet a guy within a one-year window of him separating from his long-term girlfriend or wife I think you should still stay away from him because <laughs> I don't think I just strongly do not think that a year is enough time for a man to do the work <laughs> do the work I don't think a year is enough time for a man to do the work to really acknowledge the part he played in the demise of what was a long-term relationship because if it was a long-term relationship then it must have been fulfilling in some way for both people and you know how guys are they ain't never going to be with a, a woman for, with, without a selfish reason so whatever he was getting out of that must have been fulfilling for him. So taking all of that into consideration and recognising that this man is flirting with me and based on my speculation and investigation, he's not with his wife anymore. I don't feel comfortable with this flirting because I feel like there's a strong chance that he's hovering around me because I remind him of his wife. Like, that's usually what happens, guys. Like... <laughs> If a guy has just broken up with his long-term ex-girlfriend or long-term ex-wife, do you think the first woman that he actually, like, proper tries to court is not going to in any way remind him of that woman? I feel like most men are mentally underdeveloped in such a way that that's the likelihood. So even though we hadn't had any conversation about whether he's married or not, because I didn't care to ask, like, I don't even see you as someone that I would date. 
And I don't think I need to ask because you're, even when you are married, you're flirting with me. So you're a very unhinged somebody. Yeah. You are not, you're not, you're, you're unhinged from reality because you genuinely believe that even though you were married, it was okay for you to flirt. So now that you're not even with this person anymore, based on my assumptions, you're going to be even worse and untrustworthy and scatty for the streets ass man. Taking all of that into consideration, I thought, well, you know, <laughs> this guy is still playing his weird kind of ghosty games. He was like love bombing me. This is another thing. And this, everything I'm saying, as you can see, is progressively leading towards why I later blocked him. Mm? So the love bombing, right. With love bombing, yeah, I, I think, I think that we tend to prioritize the more grandiose expressions of love bombing. Like love bombing is basically when somebody overwhelms and bombards you with a lot of romantic behavior to express that they really, really like you. And this usually happens quite early on when you've met the person. It can range from frequent gift giving or them getting you a really huge gift to them expressing that they've just met you and they already feel like they're in love with you and they want to move in with you <laughs> to them like proposing to you within the first two weeks or a month of knowing you the purpose of love bombing is to use kindness acts of kindness to distract you and get you locked into what the love bomber aims to be a codependent relationship with you where they shower it's like they switch on a power shower yeah you know those showers in those like super amazing like hotels or like amazing penthouse type showers where the water comes out from from the walls and the ceiling like it's like a dynamic flow of water coming at you from all directions that's like what love bombing feels like and then they slowly start decreasing the intensity of the water and before you know it, the shower is just dripping one drop every other second. And you're wondering, where did all the water go? I was really enjoying that. That was nice and warm. And it smelled good too of that eucalyptus hanging over the shower head. <laughs> and then you realise, OK, the person who is providing the supply is in control of it. And that's how love bombing is designed to keep you under someone else's control and authority they use love bombing as well to guilt you into feeling like well I mean he did say that he's in love with me I mean he did say that he wants to take me on holiday this is I, I don't know why guys be doing this like I feel like this is the new thing you need to watch out for because they must all be learning this somewhere I've heard this more than once from two different guys in the space of like I want to say it was within the space of a month two different guys asking me to travel with them but they're saying it in like a romantic way like come to Paris with me <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I should come to Paris with you mm. in my head because this this guy I'm talking about that I later on went went to go and block asked me to come to Paris with him but at the point when he's asked me to come to Paris with him this was our first time actually hanging out after years of interacting on social media occasionally. So it felt a bit somehow to me that you're asking me to come to Paris with you. You've not bought me anything. So I can't tell if you're the kind of guy that's going to ask me to get my own ticket to Paris, which is not happening. Like, are you the type of guy that's going to invite me to Paris and then like ignore me when we get to Paris? Like, I don't understand why you want me to come to Paris with you. So I didn't say yes to that. But I didn't say no either. I just kind of diplomatically laughed it off and 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 wove the idea into another conversation, as us Libras know how to do so well. <laughs> anyway, another thing this guy was doing to love bomb me is he would like. It's so hard to explain without it seeming like I'm ungrateful for his kindness, but he would give me the impression that. He really wants to get close to me, saying things like, we have a connection. And I wouldn't give him a response that would imply that I agree that this connection exists. But it's like he was just trying to fast track the thing. And that hurry made me feel worried. So I was like, why are you running? Like, where, what's going on here? And it doesn't help that you have just parted ways with your wife based on my assumptions and my investigations. I don't like that because it feels like, you're you're missing your wife 
I remind you of your wife and your wife was probably a very strong woman. She was probably very, like me, she was probably very creative, like me, probably very um, driven by the desire to create impact in her work, like me. So it's not surprising that you're drawn to me, but I find that quite irritating. And so what actually made me block him was that he <laughs> he went he went and traveled somewhere. Um, he had a booking in another country to go do something related to his work. So he traveled. I think it was for a week he went away. And for that whole week, I didn't hear from him, which is weird because just before he had traveled, we were supposed to go somewhere together. Again, this was his idea, his suggestion. He wanted us to go. I think it was like a date, like a soft sort of a soft date kind of. I think we were meant to go to like a, was it bowling or an arcade or something like that? Um, and the day that we were meant to actually hang out, um, that morning he cancelled and said that his, what he was meant to do on his trip has now been moved a day earlier. So he now has to leave on the day that we were meant to meet, which I wasn't mad about. He said he will make it up to me. But then immediately after he said that, he disappeared for the whole time that he was on his trip, which made me think, you know what? This guy is a phony. You know why I think he's a phony? First of all, I'll start with what people might argue on his behalf. You know, it could be argued that he's busy doing his work in, in the other country that he travelled to. So you can't expect to hear from him every day like you were hearing from him every day before he left the country. My thing is, we're living in an age where you can contact people even if they're literally in outer space. Like, you can chat to someone from from NASA Space Center, <laughs> let alone you're in the same you're on the same planet as me. Okay, interesting. Second of all, I am of the strong belief that if a guy really likes you, I don't think he will be able to hold himself back from checking in on you and talking to you or sending you some sort of message that gives you the impression that he's thinking of you, especially if he's in another country, because him being in another country means that he's physically away from you. So he knows that the chances of you connecting with someone else who you might find interesting are increased because he's not there anymore. So it's in his interest to keep the thread going. But this guy didn't keep the thread going. And so... You know, from his perspective, he probably would have thought things are all great. Like, you know, haven't spoken to her, but I'm sure I can just like drip feed her some attention when I come back from London. And hopefully I can get a shag out of her by the end of the month. So what I did was, you know, that whole week I didn't hear from him. He had sent me like a random message on Instagram that was pointless like a, like a response to a story that I posted. I think it was another, another handful of emojis as this guy always likes to do. And the reason why I felt irritated by that is because this is another thing guys do that is block worthy. How to know if a guy isn't taking you seriously and is about to waste your time is if you were having, you were having a conversation with him on something like an iMessage or a WhatsApp, like an actual messaging platform designed for communication direct yeah you were having a conversation with him instead of for him to actually like continue the conversation you were having he disappears for a long period of time and then reappears on another social media app to like poke you to see if he can get a response out of you that's weird and that shouldn't be tolerated because that tells you that what he's done is essentially he's waited for enough time to pass so that you will hopefully forget about the thing that you last spoke about. <clears throat> and he thinks that if he gives you a little poke to see how you respond on Instagram, then if you decide to now indulge in this new conversation he started over on Instagram, but technically you've given him the license to abandon the initial conversation he was meant to continue with you on the WhatsApp or the iMessage. You can't let that fly. So when he sent me that little stinker of a, of a handful of emojis, I ignored it. And then out of the blue, the following day, I blocked him on everything. 
<laughs> and he knew the block was coming. He knew it because that day that we had hung out, which was the day we actually met properly for the first time after years of occasionally interacting with each other on social media. I, I made a joke about how I had soft blocked him before. Soft blocking is when you, you know, like on Instagram where you block someone and immediately unblock them so that it mutually unfollows. So like it forces them to unfollow you and it obviously forces you to unfollow them. That's what I consider soft blocking. I'd done that to him before and he knows I did that to him and he was upset about it. He wasn't like distraught, but he just was confused as to why that happened. Because guys are always confused as to why they are met with the consequences for their behavior. Um, so I jokingly said to him, the next time it won't be a soft block, I'll actually block you. And he, <laughs> he, I think he, he seemed like he understood that I would do it and he doesn't want to put me in a position where I'll feel compelled to block him. But he, acting out of his insecure male desire to act like he's smarter than me and better than me, therefore thinking that he can put in low effort and I'll just be waiting there for him. I had to show him that that's not true, so I had to block him. And I know that he's not going to reach out to me, as he should not. Um, and I think it's going to be amusing when I eventually bump into him again at some sort of mutual friend organised social event or some sort of thing that we will mutually be drawn to in some way. And I'm just going to still tell him I blocked you because I found you annoying. <laughs> like, I don't really have mercy anymore. Sometimes I feel like if you if you hear the bad music playing in your mind, yeah. Like that music, yeah. When you're hearing that bad music, just listen to the bad music and act on it. I'm not saying that you need to be impulsive and like do something that you're immediately going to regret. I'm saying if this bad, bad music has been playing for like two weeks in your mind and you've been trying to silence it, I believe in, you know what, this guy, he hasn't done anything in my life to make himself irreplaceable or remarkable. So there's no loss in blocking him. And I kid you not, yeah, the moment I blocked him, I felt better. Because up until that time when I blocked him, I just, even the, the, the years prior when I'd be interacting with him occasionally, occasionally on social media, I always just felt very uncomfortable about his energy. Something just felt off. Like, I felt like, oh, my God, this guy just gives me the energy of those men who just, like, drain the life out of you. I can't explain it because there isn't an aesthetic for this kind of thing. It's all based on a feeling. And I kept having that feeling. And I was like, you know what? I just need to trust the feeling um, because this don't feel right. And another thing that's interesting, yeah, is, like, women tend to put men who have been married before or men who are married on pedestals. It's the idea that like, well, someone's married him, so he must be doing something right. Or like, wow, he's been married before. So that means that, you know, like he's a he's a good enough guy for someone to have locked him down. Like, uh uh, wrong. Just because somebody married him, it it don't mean he's a catch. It just means that that person at the time had low enough self esteem to 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 chain herself to him. I'm so sorry, but that is the reals my thing is as you're getting rid of that man just pray for that woman who married him pray for that woman as you hand this man back to the sky because whatever it took for her to marry him must have meant that she must have been in a really low place where she doubted her own power she felt like this was the best she could do at the time maybe she has something to prove Thank God she got out of it. She is free from that man, but he does not have to become your problem just because he stopped being someone else's problem. And also, I feel like some guys just want to get close to you so they can get into your mind. And those guys deserve to be blocked too without announcement. Like every every time you block someone, it doesn't have to be this like super villain speech beforehand where you write them the paragraph explaining all the things they've done wrong and all the reasons why they'll never meet a woman like you. Sometimes just block them out of the blue. Okay, that's going to be way more impactful than any kind of paragraph you can ever write. Yeah, because the last thing they expect is to be blocked. <laughs> you might be listening to this thinking, oh my God, like, who hurt your feelings? You're just so angry. Like, what is wrong with you? And it's not about who hurt your feelings. It's more about recognising the world that we live in <clears throat> and understanding that we have to become smarter 
because the same way we're seeing these micro movements bubble up everything from like hypergamy to like feminine what is it Femi- i'm a feminine i'm a femininity woman i'm and i'm feminine and i'm not going to be mass like all these things that we're seeing on the internet or like these sort of micro movements of women being like oh i i want a luxury life and so i'm going to date a luxury man it's like oh girl i just need to let you know that like I, there's nothing wrong with wanting these things you just need to do a lot of mental work to be able to discern between the reals and the fakes. And also there's a lot of mental work involved in developing the self-esteem to be able to date a guy who is, hate this phrase, hate this phrase, but for sake of conversation, there's a lot of mental work involved in dating a high value man. <laughs> I hate that phrase so much. The hell is a high value man? The hell is that? Like, what does that even mean? Anyway, (laughs) when I tell you, yeah, there are guys who prey on very intelligent women. These are the guys who will tell you that, like, you know, they they like a woman who has her own opinions and has a backbone and and will, will argue back. You know, a woman got to be strong in her own way. Yes, they're drawn to that. But they're drawn to it so that they can break you down. They're not drawn to it when you're calling them out and asking them to be accountable because <laughs> suddenly you're problematic. But what they're drawn to is, it's like they take it as a personal challenge to see if they can get into your mind. And I know that women like myself are a target for these men. I know that the 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 trade-off, is it, is it even a trade-off? I would say the sacrifice that I have made here, sacrifice sounds like a reach, but let's go with it. The sacrifice that I've made in choosing this line of work where I'm vocal about my ideologies regarding men and dating and feminism and women's empowerment is that I make myself a magnet for men who target intelligent, bold, powerful ladies in order to try and break them down. And these are the kind of guys who are happy to study you for years. Like the guy that I was talking about who was allegedly married, according to my according to my research. <laughs> and and I was I was in I was in social interactions with him for years before we finally met. That guy was happy for that to last years because he was studying me. And the thing is, yeah, these guys won't study you to figure out, wow, what can I do to make this woman's life easier? Wow, what can I do to make this woman feel good? No, they're studying you so they try they can try and figure out the loopholes in your mindset. Because that's what they're going to target when they're getting into your mind. Because there is something very satisfying about meeting a woman who is very sure of herself, who knows what she stands for, who is bold about her ideas, who knows how to hold her own. There's something very satisfying about like getting into that woman's mind and like arguing her out of her own ideologies. Or they, a lot of these men, they find <clears throat> great satisfaction in you making an exception for them. That is a big one. For these guys, the reason why they choose strong women or like women who have a profile or women who are just loved by loads of people is because they want to feel special by knowing that no matter how... It's like if you're a rapper or a musician and the majority of, of your lyrics is about being a bad bitch, being a boss bitch, and make that nigga do what it is. Like, you know, like a Megan Thee Stallion type of um, rhetoric or even like, a, I don't know, just like the, the boss bitch kind of like thing going on, which I'm all here for. If you're a boss bitch lady and that is evident in how you carry yourself, these guys will target you because they want to break you down. They want to find out what they can do to be the glitch. Because once they are the glitch, that means that they're special. Because it means that they've essentially kind of conquered you. And they get to they get to claim and laugh to their friends like, oh, you see this woman, this woman here that is talking about something. Oh yeah, I wouldn't date a guy who does this. I wouldn't do that X, Y, Z. She did it with me though. Like you can't let that, don't be, that's, ah! Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Because with these guys, yeah, if they can't get into your pussy, they'll just try and get into your mind. Because they know that if they can get into your mind and you've made an exception for them, then you will eventually allow them to sleep with you. Because you have put them on a pedestal that's different to every guy that you have been declining ever since. And this is the danger of, I think this is the danger of thinking in really, really rigid binaries. Because I used to be like that. I used to be a lot more binary in my thinking. 
But once I started to create room to let people show me who they are, and then I make a decision based on that, it meant that it didn't feel as difficult to keep consistent with my own personal ideologies regarding men and dating them. And what I mean by that is, you know, like I said earlier, every guy don't, every guy won't need to be blocked, but some guys do. Sometimes you do need to teach people a lesson. With other guys who don't need to be blocked though, it's like, those are the guys who, they will start out being really, really nice to you, like conditionally kind to you, and once they notice that that isn't working, then they go quiet on you. <laughs> like they think that if they suddenly turn off the shower of compliments and attention and the occasional validation, that it's going to make you be like, hey, wh why did it stop? Where did it go? Come back. Hey, hey, where are you? I think that's going to happen. Those are the guys who you need to allow them to just disappear into obscurity that will create more of an impact than blocking them. Because for guys like that, blocking them is heavy acknowledgement, unfortunately. And this is something that I've had to, I've had to um, really learn how to do as of recent because the fire sign in me just wants to smash that block button so hard. Because it's like, no, I don't want to hear from you again. But actually, no, some guys actually get a kick out of knowing that you were upset enough to block them. So with the guys who, <clears throat> with the guys who I know will get satisfaction from knowing that I blocked them, what I prefer to do is, um, <laughs> I just act like they didn't exist anymore. So they'll probably message me and I'll say nothing. Something funny happened recently, actually. <laughs> this guy, I doubt he's going to be listening to this episode because he's far too self-absorbed to be even going this far into what I'm doing but <clears throat> fingers crossed he's not listening anyway he won't even be identifiable but there's this guy recently who <laughs> he thought he was slick he thought he was feeling himself because is it because I replied to you yeah so I as you might be aware if you follow me on social media mainly Instagram I'm a pole dancer and I post my pole dancing on my stories. And so when I post music with the video, because Instagram has a feature that allows you to upload music to your story. When I post music onto the story, the story of me pole dancing, I usually will tag the musician because it one, I like their music and I'm happy for them to see it. Two, if the song has just come out, I understand how PR works. Like it's in your interest to repost the video of me dancing to your song. <laughs> and it's in my interest too, because it means my, my dancing gets more out there in an organic way, you know? And so I've done this quite a lot of times and a handful of musicians now follow me as a result of this, which is nice. So one guy, and this happened, oh my God, this happened quite a while ago. One guy, um... I tagged him in a video of me dancing to his song on my story. And then he was quite interested, um, very, very flattering towards me in his response. And he invited me to hang out. Um, he actually invited me to the studio. And I tend to roll my eyes when guys invite me to the studio. I'm not against going to the studio. It's more like if I... I'm I'm more comfortable going to the studio as in the music studio I'm more comfortable going to the studio if I already know you and I've probably already hung out with you in the studio and that's fine that's fine but if I haven't met you before and you invite me to the studio it kind of feels like oh god here we go like this could go one of two ways this could either go down the route where you invite me to the studio and there's like hella man dem there, like loads of guys there and I'm like the only girl in the studio and I'm just kind of feeling a bit out of place. And uh, Or it could go the other way where you invite me to the studio, you are creating the music as you have obviously paid for the time here to do, but we still have a chat, you know, we still hang out, we still talk. That's usually the experience I've had when I go to studios um, so I have quite a few musician friends normally that's the experience I have you know like it feels very like fun and, and, and I'm okay with us not talking for the whole time because this is a place of work for you however with this guy who invited me to the studio it 
he must have thought he was inviting me to Chessington. He must have thought this was my first time in the studio. Because the way this guy thought that all he needed to do was like, invite me to the studio. I come over. I'm sat there just like on my own. There are a few people already there. I'm the only woman there. And like, he's doing his thing. Like he's recording his takes and playing on the keyboard or whatever. And he's barely talking to me. I'm just there in the background, just just awkwardly, just kind of like not knowing what to do with myself. And this was my first time actually meeting him in person. So it just felt really weird. It kind of felt like, did you just invite me here to like try and do that thing that guys do where they invite you to the studio to impress you with their musical skills? Because if that's what you were trying to do, it didn't work. Like you actually have to talk to me as a person. <laughs> like, yes, you can. Yes, you're, you're a great writer. You're a great rapper. You're a great singer. You're a great keyboardist. You're a great guitarist. Whatever kind of crazy expression you have that involves being in a studio, we can acknowledge that you're already good at that. Yes, great for you. But I'm going to need a lot more stimulation than that. So uh, when I got home from the studio, I immediately messaged him and was like, I don't. I don't like that I was in, I was just sitting there in the background while you were working. Like, if you want to hang out again, you need to make proper plans. <laughs> and then he acknowledged it and suggested that we hang out again. And I was open to that. So we both kind of like, was that like, Tuesday work for you, Wednesday work for you, you know, trying to figure out each other's schedules. So eventually we got to a place where I said, I think I said like Tuesday works for me. And this guy ignored me for like two whole weeks. But like the first week of him ignoring me, and this is a thing that guys do that I don't understand. And this is similar to my previous situation, as you will hear in a minute. The first week into him ignoring me, he was sending me random Instagram DMs in response to my story, like calling me pretty and like sending me these like heart eye emojis. And when I'm receiving these Instagram DMs, I'm thinking, excuse me, we're having a conversation. Like I told you I'm available on this day to hang out. You haven't replied, but you're replying to my stories. This is weird. Like, can you just complete the conversation that we started? I don't get why guys do that. It's really bizarre. <laughs> so what did I do? I ignored, I ignored the message that he sent on Instagram because that's some rubbish. Like complete the conversation we were having. So then, <clears throat> two whole entire weeks of silence whiz by. And by the two-week mark, I've mentally written this guy off. I've told myself, well, you know what? He was testing to see if I'm somebody who he can ignore when he feels like it. So he's obviously going to have to see that's not going to work. And the only way to show him that that won't work is to not give him any attention, because that's what he wants, clearly. Two weeks have gone, not heard anything from him. Then, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, how convenient. Oh, so timely. I posted this really sexy picture of myself on my story. It was like a, a post-poll practice picture, like a mirror picture of me still wearing my, like, poll gear on. And um, he saw the story. And conveniently, when he had seen that story, he immediately messaged me. In the original place where we were having the conversation where we were discussing when we were meant to meet, he suddenly conveniently messaged me and was like, hey, sorry, I totally missed this message. Oh, I was so busy. Sorry, didn't get back to you sooner. I just ignored that. I was like, nope, you're hearing nothing from me. So, Shabby, you say you want to ignore me for two weeks, yeah? Because that two weeks of ignoring me communicated to me that you don't, you don't care to hang out. It's not a priority to you. And that's fine. Like... I don't have to be a priority in the lives of people I've just met. I can acknowledge that and I can hold space for that. But what I will not accommodate is you trying to flirt with me, but also trying to give me the impression that you're not interested. That's weird behavior. So I ignored him for two weeks. I think it was probably even longer than two weeks, to be honest, but around that mark. And then literally like yesterday, <laughs> Yesterday, he sent me a, a, a Instagram DM being like, hey, I sent you an apology a few weeks back. Not sure if you saw it. And then maybe like an hour later on the same Instagram, I replied, yeah. Like I said, Y-E-A. I was just like, yeah. Because at this point, I don't care. You don't respect me. You try to do that thing where you act uninterested even though you're desperately interested and now it's backfired. So now you've come you've come to remind me that you apologized to me. Eh, I saw your apology now. So I was like, yeah. And he was like, uh, well, thanks for replying. Sorry I wasted your time. 
And I just simply wrote, I accept your apology with like the a colon on a bracket, like a smiley emoji, but without the emoji, just the plain colon on a bracket. And I kept it there. And it's like, well, good for you. Good for you. You went out and spoiled it by yourself because, because you wanted to act like you weren't interested and then it backfired. He's not someone that I'm going to block, but he's someone who I'm not going to entertain either. So all in all, it's about having the discernment of knowing whether you should block someone or not. And it comes down to, are you okay with this person thinking that you're bitter? Because sometimes it's better for them to think that you're bitter than for them to think you're accessible. Or in other instances where you don't block this guy, do you have the self-control to not reply to him if he throws you another chicken bone? Because if deep down you don't yet have the self-control to resist his attempts to temporarily get your attention only to ignore you once he's got your attention you're better off just blocking him charge that one to the game and let him believe that you're upset about something you'll both get over it but I just don't believe that there is any point in allowing men to breadcrumb you to throw chicken bones at you to chuck pebbles at your window and each time you hear that nick on your window you go and look because that just tells them that you're always going to be responsive and they kind of keep on doing it and the cycle will not end. So you've got to decide, do you want to break the cycle or do you want to be an active participant in it? And the only way to decide that is if you're going to block him or not.